Hey everyone, Jared here. And today we are going to do a walk around of my homemade snow plow. Uh, this seems to come up quite a bit in the different groups where people are looking to make a homemade plow for the front of their tractor, usually based upon a truck snow plow, which is what this is. This is a seven foot, six inch snow plow made for a truck that I have fabricated and attached to a skid steer quick attach plate. And I did a few things that are different than most people. And that's the purpose of the, of the walk around today. I want to, I want to point those out, explain to you what I did, why I did these things and why I think you should probably do this as well. So I'm gonna grab the camera, I'm gonna be behind the camera from this point forward, and we're gonna start looking at the different features of this homemade plow. So one of the first things I'd like you to notice and focus on is that I made this plow what's called underslung. So instead of taking the, the plow mount and welding it to the front of the skid steer quick attach plate, it's actually attached and pivoted behind the plate by quite a bit. So this really does two things. Number one, it, it makes it better for the loader because you're reducing the amount of leverage on everything by having the, the angle and the pivot closer. And number two, it makes everything more compact so the plow's not sticking out quite as far. One of the next things I did, I kept the chain mount. So this plow pivots on these pins, the same pins that it used as a truck plow, and then floats with the chain. So when I put the loader down and it rests on the skis, the plow will float on its own without putting the loader in float. Now, why would I do that? Number one reason, weight. On the front of a truck, this thing is floating under its own weight and that's all it's needed, right? So there's no reason to have the entire loader in float and adding all of that extra weight on this. If I need down pressure, I can't actually achieve it just by making this frame impact or rest on the plow frame. But I don't need to and I don't want to. I don't have to have that much weight in order to plow effectively. So by building it this way, I'm able to keep the loader weight off of the plow and just letting it float on its own. This also helps with steering. By keeping the weight of the loader on the tractor and on the front tires, it allows the tractor to steer better because of the extra weight on there. If I were to float the loader and have all of that on the plow, that's reducing the amount of weight on the front tractor tires and will reduce steering ability. One new thing that I made for this is these wider, different style skis. Instead of the round shoes that are normally on these, I built these skis. So the shoes, they dig into gravel. We don't get snow here that sticks around long enough usually that we ever get a frozen base. So I built these skis to ride on this gravel and try to prevent it digging both from the skis as well as keeping the plow up off of the gravel. The way I made these, I have this spindle here mounted towards the front and that is so they will self align based upon how the plow is angled. They will always want to trail and stay in line with the direction of travel instead of, instead of catching sideways and catching gravel. Now one thing I do not have on here yet, but will show in a future video is I am going to install a crossover relief valve. Now a crossover relief valve, what that'll do is that'll mount between both hydraulic lines and I'll just have it mounted up here on the frame but when the plow is angled, or even when it's straight, if it were to catch something, the hydraulic pressure will be increased enough on one side that it'll go through this relief valve and relieve to the other side 
which will allow the plow to pivot under that increased pressure. This is a safety feature that is offered on a lot of factory built plows and it's actually uh, also on my rear blade that I have from Woods. It has a factory crossover relief valve on it. So once again, I don't have that yet. Uh, I will mount it on here and I will show it in an upcoming video. All right, so we're gonna fire the tractor up and lower this a little bit and I'll show you how this works. So the plow is functioning off of the third function. So it's the same actuator that I would use for my grapple. So here you can see how the blade will float without having the loader and float. So the chain has slack on it, right? The plow will be going along plowing, the skis are helping to keep it up and it's pivoting on those pins back there. There's several inches of room for this to float up and it'll float down with as much slack as I have in the chain. Turn the tractor off here for a second. All right, so how did I build it and how did I figure everything out? So I'll, I'll post some pictures in here of me fabricating this along the way. But what I did is I started off by putting this plow up on planks of boards and getting it to where it was level and where I thought the plow needed to be. Then I set the plate in here and started to just kind of roughly place everything and figure out where I thought it needed to be and then really build it from there. It was a it was quite an on-the-fly fabrication with no drawings, no Fusion 360, you know, nothing like that. This was just all fabricating it as I went. So I hope this helped you guys. Uh, there's not a whole lot here to it and not a whole lot to show off, but I will be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. And if, and if there's anything that you would like to see in greater detail, please let me know. But otherwise, if this video has proven helpful, then do me a favor and hit the thumbs up, like the video, Subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified of upcoming videos. And as always, have a great rest of your day. So here's how I started. I have the plow frame propped up on the four by four and then the skid steer quick attach plate just leaning and being held vertical so I can get a rough guess of how everything's gonna lay out. From here, I started to lay out the base frame that's going to hold the pivots for the back of the plow. And then these are the ears that are actually supporting the plow itself. I took four pieces of steel and tack welded them on the edges. So when I drilled them and then also sanded the corners down round, they would all four be the same. And here I have the ears welded to the frame, but it's not welded to the plate yet. It's just there for me to test, make sure everything fits. Now I have moved everything up to the weld table and I've started to build out the frame and the bracing for the front of the quick attach plate and how it is supporting the rest of the frame for the plow. And here it is starting to take shape. Everything is tacked on the plate and it is pinned to the plow so I can make sure once again, everything is fitting together just right. And then still the same configuration, but a view from the rear. And here you can see some more of the bracing I added, one of which pieces is a piece of channel that is on the front of the skid steer plate, and that's to help spread the force out from the frame mounts. And then I also have two tubes triangularly going from the rear of the mount to the front and that is to help keep the mount itself from racking 
another view of the same progress. I welded studs to the frame in a couple places and used rubber coated P clips to help hold the hoses in place. And I also purchased plastic box tubing in caps to close off everywhere that was open. Then to finish it off, here's a couple pictures of the skis I made that helps support the plow, keep it from digging into the gravel. 